Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about the summary of the subsurface reservoir characterization of Malaysia and Brunei. I am Dr. Melissa Johansson, and I had 20 years of experience in the oil and gas regions of Southeast Asia and around the world, and I'm Principal Geologist for Geoid Energy Limited. The outline of this talk is going to look at the tectonic setting of the basins um, in discussion, the stressed regimes, the basin types, the tertiary stratigraphy, and look at examples from the Malay Basin, the Penu Basin, the Sarawak Basin, and the Baran Province, Brunei, Laconian Province, uh, Sarawak Sabah, and the Malaysian Basin rocks, and then just touch on the conclusions. If we look at the map here, the region in question is this light pink area with Kuala Lumpur being the capital of Malaysia. Here in the mainland, uh, here is Singapore, here is Thailand, and here we have Sarawak and Sabah, which is also part of Borneo. Uh, Malaysia Borneo with Brunei here in, in the middle of it all. The tectonic settings of Malaysia. Well, here is a, a rough crude map of, of the region. And here you see the, the Java Trench, uh, which is a massive subduction zone around Indonesia and Java and Sumatra. And here we have the Filipino Sea Plate sandwiched in here and the Indian Australian Plate over here. We see that the area in question, Malaysia and Borneo, are in the middle of this quite quiescent zone, um, tectonically. Here we have a detail of the, um, of the tectonics with the, the, the Java Trench subducting here, as you see here in the graphics. And we have our area, Malaya, or uh, Malaysia and Borneo, in the middle of this Sunderland shelf, fairly quiescent zone. And here we have Sarawak and Brunei and Sabah, which is a little bit outside South China Sea here. When we look at the map made up 20 million years ago in the early Miocene, we see that there was a subduction zone um, subducting down the Sabah um, and Brunei, which formed the Crocker Rajang mountain range that forms a massive source of sediment, and it's called the Northwest Borneo Trough. And this formed a rotation of Borneo. Um, into its present uh, orientation from a northwest southeast orientation, which we'll talk about later. The stress regimes that we see, um, this is a modern day map of, of the current stress regimes. And we see that over where uh, Brunei is, we see a, a northwest southeast uh, dominant stress um, with a north south in the uh, more mainland. And if we look a little more detail, of, of the region we're in question. We see here that northwest, southeast around Borneo and a little bit more northeast, southwest um, of regional stresses. When we look at 45 million years ago, we see a, a rotation of, of the stresses with the compressional regime, the maximum stress being in the, in the northeast, southwest orientation with minimum stress northwest, southeast. And this obviously has implications for the orientations and your drilling directions of, of your boreholes. The basins that we see, or, or, or we are just discussing, is the Malay Basin. This is the main oil and gas region. The Penu Basin, which is a small um, operator by Lundin. Uh, the Sarawak Basin with the West Luconian, the carbonates here. The Balingian province, which is the, cl the clastics, the Sabah Basin here. Uh, with Brunei sandwiched in the middle here. The different types of, of, of tectonic settings, where well, we have the terrestrial rift valley, which is associated with that thunder shelf. We have the uh, immature ocean, the, the um, immature oceans, which is associated with the margins of, of, of Sarawak. And then we have the convergent margin, which is associated with that uh, subduction zone along Brunei Sabah. In terms of the stratigraphy, we have a twofold uh, nomenclature with the alphabetics that go on in the Malay Basin. And we have the nomenclature cycle two being the key area and the IJ here in the early Miocene being some of the major plays with some basins a little bit deeper, L and M and one cycle one. Most of the plays are in this region. The classical model for the region is essentially a tidal marine fluvial setting 
which literally cover, covers all most of sedimentology. And with a as sea levels fall and rise, um, the, the the model ranging from an incision in size channel, fluvial channel, to to a deltaic muddy sandy muds with gulls, and dispersed with muddy shallow marine muds. When we look at um, an amplitude atrophy map, um, this is from the Bogot Fields Malay Basin. We see these channels uh, here in the red, um, almost subseismic, uh, which stack on top of each other as they meander along that, that delta. We see here, these are the faults in red. And when we look at the, the model, this is Bangkok here. This is the, the uh, delta forming across that sunder shelf which provides the classic model, the deltaics here, the shelf. And chasing these channels is not easy with the amount of clay and mud in the system. This is the, uh, the major oil and gas fields in the Malay Basin, um, with the green being the oil and, and the red being the gas. When we look at the petrifact play, this is PM 304 in the Jabu Liang anticline structure. And these are some of the, the recent gas uh, finds in, in the area. This play was in the H group, the Mycene. And we, we simply have um, the more sandier part of the system here in the estuarine channel with sandy muds, muddy sands, um, sandbars migrating, in addition to crevasse blaze and channels. A very thin bed, very complicated, uh, sedimentologically, mineralogically, and petrophysically. So to summarize their attributes, thin beds, heterolithics, shaly sands, sandy shales, biotubation, which also complicates because uh, some of our clean sands have muddy Biotubation and some of our muddy sands have sandy biotubation. Thin sand bodies, subseismic resolution, literal lateral continuation, very difficult to put markers. And then for the petrophysicists, pyrite, chloride, glauconite mineralization with additional coals and hard grounds, carbonates or siderites. Um, and then we have a fluvial paling current towards the southeast, with marine incursions towards the northwest. When we look at the penisum, that is a small basin off Peninsula Malaysia, which Lundin are exploiting. It's set in the middle of some graben system uh, of faults and fractures. The uh, two, the well in question from Lundin was these Bertram, Bertram one and two, which found uh, a, a gas play in the Penny Basin. This Penu Basin is uh, deeper, older than, than the, the Malay Basin of the Petrifac and the Oligocene and is known as the Penu Basin Sands, equivalent to the L of the South Malay Basin. When we look at the seismic sections, we see that this red channel, singular red channel, represents the main incision of the channel, not necessarily sandy. Um, these can be mud, mud filled with high amplitudes. Um, and the basin is east-west trending, however, the paler current was southwest. And we see the model again with this sandbar estuarine system. The characterization very similar to the Malay Basin, thin beds, heterolithics, shaly sands, sandy shales, biotubation, rootlets, thin sand bodies, subseismic resolution, literal lateral continuation, pyrite, chloride, glauconite, firm grounds and coals, and paler currents towards the southwest. When we look at the Sarawak Basin, particularly the Balai Cluster, this is in the Malingian province, um, just offshore Sarawak, which is a part of this Rajang fold. A lot of sediment going into the system. Here we see the Sarawak coastline and these A, B, C, D uh, in time, with these being the late Oligocene to early Miocene. Um, and here we see that from the middle Miocene to the present day. And we see that the coastline was northwest southeast during the late Oligocene, early Miocene, 
with sediments being coastal plains uh, to, to shallow marine, and then rotation during those that subduction over in um, Brunei, Sabah, we see the coastline changing to northeast southwest from the Middle Miocene to the present day, um, obviously affecting the sediment distribution uh, and the models. The model is a little more uh, is similar to the previous Malay in the Penu, however, there's a lot more. Um, plastic fluvial settings in the low um, stands and we actually see some of these very stripped sandy braided river systems migrating along the plain uh, as well as low sinuosity channels as well as high sinuosity channels and distributary channels we see the full range within one cycle of, of, of the uh, of the oligocene miocene sediments one recent um, this is the locality map of, of the blocks and recent uh, finds uh, being the Spau on West Assis plays. And these were in the cycle two sediments of, of the offshore Sarawak regime. And when we look at the model, a little bit more um, it's classic, a bit more sandy. Um, a sandy fluvial with with the range from this uh, very fluvial system to a very estuarine system um, elongated tidal bars braided sand bars and tidal fluvial channels so in terms of the a summary of the characteristics we have thin beds heterolithics shaly sand sandy shales bioturbation thick sand bodies in contrast to the others uh, still little lateral continuation very difficult to chase them Pyrite, glaucite, chlorite, glauconite, firm grounds, coals, and siderites, and then late Oligocene, early Miocene, paleo currents towards the northeast, and then middle Miocene, late Miocene, paleo currents towards the northwest. If we go to Brunei, uh, the Baram currents, we see here this is much more complicated tectonically due to that subduction zone. We see the Crocker uh, Rajang mountain range that was a consequence of that subduction. We see multiple uh, troughs and, and, and mounds uh, throughout the uh, off-slope area. This is a modern-day shelf, a 3D seismic, and we see that, and, and is almost analogous to the to the Oligocene, um, where we have these very topographic seafloor um, sediments coming off the shelf, forming these fans, but using the topography to um, uh, for hydraulic jumps, um, thickening, speeding up the sediments um, as it weaves around the topography. It also characteristic of this region are these slumps, cohesive slumps, massive debrites um, forming uh, along the shelf, it's possibly associated to both tectonics and sea level change. Recent blaze, the recent finds is uh, the CA2 and CA1 by Brunei Petroleum, um, and this here is that in that block from from Brunei, in between Sarawak, Sarawak and Sabah. When we look at the seismic in cross section, you see this crenulated feature, very characteristic of deep marine settings, um, with lots of shear zones where the muds have have, have creeped um, and shearing. Um, as they fail down the slope. You also see this faint chaotic surfaces in the seismic. Characteristic of this area then is the mass transport complexes or mass transport deposits. These are impermeable barriers to flow um, and can be the quite difficult drilling hazards. Structures, massive sands, difficult to interpret in terms of deposition environment or at least in terms of orientation of the flow. Thin beds, uh, overbank of the key or a key reservoir play and can produce which obviously are associated with the massive sands above it are really overbank deposits deep water expensive wells with little success paleo current towards the northwest the laconia province this is uh, carbonates and now we start to see uh, carbonate mounds um, similar to great barrier reef um, uh, forming on atolls, forming on hard grounds, forming on, on highs, surrounded by clastic sediments. 
here is the uh, the map of the area. Here is the West Laconian, uh, Central Laconian province, um, which is the carbonate area. And we see we are in cycle uh, four of, of, of the area uh, in the Miocene. An analog to this is some of the atolls of offshore uh, Saba, and where you see these 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 carbonates still alive and still forming today in the region. Uh, Sipidam being a classic example. So the characteristics of these, they're extremely heterogeneous. They have lots of macro porosity. They also are karstic, huge losses during drilling. And the importance of fractures are unknown. And then finally, the Malay Basin, not a uh, common play in Malaysia, but starting to be um, explored. And this is a uh, 20 kilometers uh, of seismic section from the basin floor. Um, and you see from uh, outcrops, uh, Bukit Chendring, East Malaysia, that these fractures are considered the play. They are interconnected and they form a network of permeability. The porosity, although very, very tight, you can see from it from this thin section a sketch that actually in in fine in the small scale there is small connected fractures that also give permeability so although there's limited porosity there's, there's quite extensive permeability and if there is a source of, of shale uh, this can percolate through the the permeable fractures and become a good play so the character is the basement is actually metasediments. Um, most of them in Malaysia, rather than granites, are, are, are metamorphic clastics. The fractures uh, seem to relate to lithology, with with the um, sandstones being a little more fractured than, than the shells. The shells allows in a more plastic response to the deformation. Uh, complex production profiles, unknown the importance of aperture and orientation of fractures. Uh, obviously, it's very difficult to, to determine the actual production from basement, especially if there's co-mingling um, and not knowing whether it is the size of the aperture or the orientation of the fracture that allows connectivity to the flow. Uh, the fractures tend to be east-west striking with a subset north-south and, and as you would imagine, these are deep, expensive wells. So to conclude, we have four main plays in uh, Malaysia and, and um, Brunei. One, the shallow marine coastal, the classic uh, play of, of, of fluvial uh, deltaics and shallow marine, which are considered or, or located in the Malay Basin, the Penyu Basin, and some of the Sarawak Basins, um, with a little more fluvial input on the Sarawak Basin. We have deep marine turbidites in Brunei, Sabah and Sarawak, um, which uh, Murphy being the um, very successful producer in the Sabah. And then we have the carbonates, the Pinnacle Reef plays in Malay and the Sarawak Basin. And then we have some basement uh, metamorphic clastics in the Malay Basin. I hope this was helpful to get you started and give you a little taster of what's out there. And uh, please email me if you feel you'd like to answer any questions to my talk. Thank you. Bye bye.